Hey everybody, it's April and I have a really important topic that I wanna to talk about tonight and that is sweeteners. So we're talking about sugar, we're talking about alternative sweeteners and we're talking about artificial sweeteners and there's definitely a distinction between those three. And I'm wearing my glasses tonight so I can read some of my notes so I don't forget anything. This is an important one so make sure that you watch it right to the end. The first thing that I wanna talk about is the fact that lifestyle change means just that. So I've worked with a lot of people who are diabetic or whatever, they're trying to change their lifestyle and the thing about it is that um, you know they're taking things that are sugary and then they're replacing it with artificial sweeteners and have they really changed their lifestyle what you guys have done in following the program with TLS is you have done just that you've changed your palate you've cleaned out your body you haven't been you know you've been but whether you know it or not you're changing the physiology of your system by having eliminated all of that sugar so it doesn't mean that you can never have anything sweet again but what it does mean is that it's important for you to know that anytime you eat sweet it begets a craving for sweet you actually crave more of what you eat more of the rest of it that physiological craving that's going to be going away more and more with time the psychological craving is because we attach emotions to things that are surrounded by food and so that's a big one you know that takes a little bit longer because those are neurological pathways that have been starting to get ingrained since somebody put a chocolate piece of cake in your face when you're one year old and you had no choice um, but to start to get a, a taste for sweet and you probably every single one of you didn't like it and everybody clapped and yelled and laughed and said oh my god how cute it was and little did they know that they started you on a path to never being able to say no to an m m you know so anyway there's a lot of important information um, let's talk about the distinction first you have things that are sugar actual sugar that you know um, there's good and bad so to speak now they're all high glycemic they're all going to affect your blood sugar they're all going to not be helpful in terms of weight loss and more importantly cholesterol Case in point, I digress for a second, but if you wanna lower your cholesterol, the best way to do that is to get your sugars under control. And the way we do that is eating low glycemic, which is exactly what you've been doing. So for those of you who might have had like a little bit higher cholesterol before starting this program, you may wanna check that because it's not just because of the weight loss that that cholesterol goes down. There's a lot of people that are skinny fat and have high cholesterol. Anyway, that's a sidebar. So, um, Anyway, I'm gonna to try to do it blind. So something like this, raw sugar, we do keep in our cabinet. It lasts for like a really long time. And that's just because we're not using it on a regular basis. But if we have you know, friends over and they want sugar in their coffee, um, we give alternatives. We have alternative sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit, which I'll show you. And then this would be real sugar. So this is compared to the processed sugar that would be like the white processed sugar or the little table sugars you'd find at a restaurant. Those you wanna stay away from, this one would be more real, if you will. Another one that would fall into that category that would be lower glycemic impact is something called coconut palm sugar, which I do have somewhere in my daughter's baking stuff, but um, I didn't pull it out. But that is something that like is maybe a 35 or 40 on the glycemic index scale, but again, sugar and things that are sweet do, do beget a craving for something sweet. So it's nothing that you wanna use in large amounts by any means, but I just wanted to tell you the difference there so that if you were looking between you know things that your body recognized as real, that would be it. Here's the thing that people don't really totally, um, sometimes they cross the name and it's semantics, but it does matter. An artificial sweetener is different than an alternative sweetener. So an artificial sweetener would be the things that are really just that, they're processed, they're chemicals, and they're not good for you at all in any kind of way, shape, or form. Whereas something that's an alternative sugar is not actually sugar, it's not made from a fruit that has sugar or something like that, um, but it is sweet, maybe sweeter than sugar. And those would be things like stevia um, or monk fruit or agave or things of that nature. So they're alternative to a regular sugar, but that doesn't make them chemically processed. So that's kind of important. Some people are like, no, 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 no to you know sweeteners. And I agree with them if it is one of the ones that I'm gonna put on my red flag list. So here's how I've broken it down. Red, yellow, green. Red is like, please just stay away from it in any category. And green does not mean go ahead and have it all the time. It just means if they're gonna be ones that you have in your cabinet on occasion to put in a tea or to use for whatever reason, use them in small moderation you know, kind of doses, but these are the ones that you would use. Okay, let's start. 
the white processed sugar, it's out. That's the red right there, okay? I'm putting raw sugar in a red just because it's sugar, but this you can have in your cabinet in case you do need on occasion some real actual sugar. It's brown, it's coarse, and at least it's not processed and your body knows what to do with it, all right? And it's much sweeter, so you don't actually need quite as much of it. Then we have in the yellow category, oh, and I, um, yeah, so in the red category, excuse me, we have some artificial sweeteners, and those for me would start with aspartame. 100% you need to stay away from aspartame. It's in bars, it's in yogurts, it's in gum, it's in a lot of different things, and it's in a blue or a pink packet, so it's the equal or it's the NutraSweet. The aspartame that's in there has wood alcohol in it. And when you heat it to a high temperature, it can actually cross the blood brain barrier. So it's actually harder for people to come off of a diet soda that has aspartame than coffee. And if you were one of those people who detoxed and really felt that pull towards the diet sodas or really got the massive headaches, I always find with all of the clients that I've run through this program, it's always harder for the people who are withdrawing from the aspartame. Not only that, but it does affect how your body knows when it's satiated and it actually interrupts that signal. So it's bad in a lot of levels. And there's studies that show that people who drink diet sodas, diet teas, iced teas, whatever that have aspartame in it or artificial sweeteners are 10 pounds heavier than people who don't. So somehow in the 70s and 80s, we got into this like, you know, artificial sugar thing and we just do it, I think, because we think it's somehow better than real sugar, but that's not the case. Um, I used to work in head injury rehab and the one item they never let on your tray of food that you ate, if you had your head injury acquired from the removal of a tumor or the presence of a tumor, they never allowed aspartame. Why? Because even though our hospitals are so behind on the East Coast in terms of nutrition for healing, they knew that the studies were way too great for tumor regrowth with the use of aspartame. Isn't that interesting? So in our house, that's an absolute no. That one, along with trans fats and high fructose corn sugar, those are all a red, red, red flag. So we're gonna stay away from those. Saccharin also is another one that I would stay away from. So that's the sweet and low in the pink packets that my grandmother used to steal at the you know, restaurants or whatever, that's a no-go as well. So you stay away from those because they have the most impact on your health. I know that even people with aspartame usage have um, you know, headaches and you know, gout and all sorts of different things, seizure disorders even, um, you know, that can be linked to that. In the yellow category would be something like Splenda. Splenda is sugar, but it's got an extra chlorine molecule. So it's just chlorinated sugar, kind of like table salt, you know? Um, so it's really, I mean, you'd have to have 1700 packets according to studies to really have a huge impact on your health. That said, some people are just sensitive and they prefer not to have it. I believe it's fine in low exposure. Again, I don't want to see a diabetic person or somebody who's, you know, trying to lose weight to replace everything with sugar with everything with Splenda because now they have a ton of it and it's a ton of exposure. But you take like the TLS nutrition shake, that one in particular has sucralose in it, which is what Splenda is just the brand name for it. And that one has the equivalent of one packet of Splenda in the entire canister. So the exposure you're getting to it is very, very low. All right, so now we move into um, sort of the green areas. What are the ones that are okay to have? These are the two that would be my best picks, okay? One of them is Stevia. This is just organic Stevia. And the other one is monk fruit. They both come in packets or you could get them in, you know, bigger, you know, amounts. Um, and Stevia will come in a brand name, maybe like Truvia would be the brand name for it. My daughter uses that sometimes when she makes something gluten-free for my daughter who's celiac. So she'll use that on occasion to bake and sometimes she'll use raw sugar. She loves to bake, I don't stop her from doing that, but she tries to use more wholesome ingredients, sweet potatoes, black beans, all sorts of fun stuff that she does. And she tries to keep them grain and dairy free. So she uses things like coconut you know, flours and almond flours and things like that. So these, you know, if you're gonna put them into a tea or a coffee or something, in small amounts, those are gonna be just fine. And they may just help you to get through that craving of sweet without really presenting too much for you that's not good. That said, and I hope that helps, that said, just because something doesn't have a calorie and it doesn't have sugar, remember this, your body doesn't know the difference. So if you take in something like Truvia or Sweet and Low, or excuse me, um, monk fruit 
or the regular stevia or whatever, and your brain detects something that's sugar and sweet, you're still gonna have an insulin surge. So it's very possible that with that, you are still going to, you know, be sort of storing fat or sort of become in that fat, you know, in that fat storing mode because insulin's gonna get released into your system. So if you just wake up in the morning and you have a sugary cup of coffee, but you've used stevia, it's not that it's okay. So my best idea for you is that if you are gonna have these, have them when you're having food. You know, don't just have a cup of tea with something sweet in it first thing in the morning and get your blood sugar going because your body thinks that, you know, it needs it, even though your blood sugar hasn't gotten up, that you're getting an insulin surge anyway. I don't want to see that happen and then have you reverse some of your effects. So just be sensitive to that. The last thing I'm going to stop with is that there was a great um, study that was done with rats and it was three groups. So I'll just explain quickly. The sugar group, that was a group of rats that were fed like a sugar water, sort of like a soda or a Gatorade or something like that. Then they were fed a brownie food. The other two groups were an artificial sweetener group and they had water with artificial sweetener. They were fed the same brownie-like food and then water and they were fed a brownie-like food. Well, the group with the water, they were able to nibble on the brownie and stop. The other two groups, they could not stop eating the brownie. They'd eat it, go away, come back, go away, come back, go away. There were a lot of things that were derived from that study, but one of the most important things was that they were examining how artificial sweeteners, just like sugar, not just increase cravings and your inability to sort of like know when you're full, but that actual response, that message that you're getting to your system that you're not needing to eat anymore. And that, that was interrupted, not just with sugar, but with artificial sweeteners as well. So I know it's a lot of information. Thank you for hanging in with me, you guys, and keep up with the videos so you can learn the next great topic.